long-term recovery involves, um, and you see this beautifully actually in some harm reduction settings, that people in some ways need to claim an identity that's other than that of an addict. So um, I started my career down here in the Lower East Side. I started a methadone clinic relatively close to here. And one thing that struck me was many of these patients I treated were addicts 24 hours a day, which maybe sounds obvious, but it was striking to me. that the, they, they said to me, the only person I ever speak to who doesn't use drugs is my mother. All conversations are with people who are using drugs. So their whole world had collapsed down to something so narrow and so small. But to get better, they need to become something other than an addict. And they need to find some sense of self and some sense of connection, some sense of place that competes with and replaces that of being an addict, that's reinforcing, that's meaningful. Now, certainly you see, and you're seeing this, I think vocal is a great example, which I think sometimes hangs out here, and harm reduction needle change. If I become a needle exchange worker, I go out on the streets. Well, now what am I doing? Well, now I may be still an active user, but I'm also a peer counselor. I'm also an HIV activist. I'm also, you know, I'm showing up someplace. I'm wearing, it, wearing my vest. I'm giving out stuff. Myself, is, I'm getting more complex, and I'm sure you see this here. Some, not everybody, but some of those people begin to make some changes. You know, and I think that's, in harm reduction, you begin to see that in the world. And that's the model, because over time, people who maintain long-term recovery, they claim their role of father, they claim their role of student, they claim their role, they go back to do something business, they become athletic, they do something, and that competes with. And if you don't do that, in my opinion, you never get better. You ultimately will, will fall back, you become a religious person, or a political person, or something. But you have to find something. And since most treatment is really focused on the here and now, we don't tend to think about it. how is this going to manage over the long haul. But our field is changing towards a more chronic, relapsing model. This, these thoughts begin to make more sense. And lastly, in the paper, I did give mixed endorsements to the recovery movement. I think the downside of the recovery movement is they are, are anti-psychiatric and anti-psychological. In some ways, they think that they sort of say, we've done the medical model. The medical model has failed. Now we're going to a social model. In my opinion, we're just beginning to do a medical model. We've never done a medical model before. This is the early days of a real brain disease, new medicines developing, new psychotherapies. We're at the beginning of a mental health model. They've misunderstood what has happened historically. But I think the sense of people creating a culture of recovery, methadone people, 12-step people, people recovered by themselves, talking, supporting each other, you know, creating cafes where they can go to, this is only for the good. So I think recovery culture, which I think will grow, you know, is very popular in some circles, is growing. I think that's positive, but they've, they've misunderstood, I think, the history of the movement. And they're a little bit, I'm a little nervous that they're anti-psychological and anti-treatment. Uh, anti